The Divine Mother is the force and consciousness that sustains creation. She is worshipped under many names and in many cultures, and she has been worshipped throughout history in many forms. But behind every form and every name, she is one, eternal and omnipotent. She is transcendent and stands above all her creations in the silence of the Absolute. She is the breath and power of all creation. She is in every part of creation forever. The work of the Divine Mother is the transformation of humanity into God, of time into eternity, of matter into divine matter. Her work is a work of transformation and it has no end. Who is Mother Mira? She is the living incarnation of the Divine Mother. What is an incarnation? An incarnation is the divine in human form come on earth to help humanity to know and realize the divine. Mother Mira's will and power are the will and power of the Divine Mother. Mother Mira's work and the work of the Divine Mother are the same work. Mother Mira has come to purify the consciousness of the earth so it may be ready for transformation. At dawn I woke up. I was not well. I slept again from 7 p.m. to midnight. My whole body was shaking with pain and fear. After 12 I heard a loud voice. It was as loud as thunder. It was as loud as if it were being made by thousands of people. When I woke up, I saw I was alone and said to Paramatman, Paramatman, I don't know who you are and I have never even heard your name. Don't trouble me like this because if I stay in this condition, I'll die in a few days. I can't bear the pain and suffering. I'll wait and see if the pain returns tonight. After 6 a.m., I saw Paramatman's dazzling light. At 8 a.m., I woke up and my body felt much better. After this experience, I know why my body became weak and tired. It was because it knew that Paramatman's light was going to enter in. That is why I now look after it very carefully. In the very beginning, Durga went to Paramatman and asked him to give her more forms of existence. She asked for the first form and Paramatman sanctioned her request. This form was named Maha Lakshmi and Paramatman described its attributes. Thus was Maha Lakshmi born. Then Durga asked for the forms of Maha Saraswati and Maheshwari. Paramatman approved once more and specified their qualities. Durga accepted them. Afterwards, she asked for a special form, and Paramatman, giving no description this time, merely said, Do as you wish. And a unique, powerful, victorious, and unchallengeable form was born. Durga came to Paramatman, vested in this last form. She was decorated with ornaments, a most beautiful attire, and a gorgeous sari. But taking leave of Paramatman, she appeared naked and dancing. She was charming and beautiful, free to do as she wished. This form was Mahakali, who has such tremendous powers. Durga called an assembly. Gods and goddesses, rishis and yogis were invited. Durga asked me to receive special powers from the gods and goddesses who were ready to confer their gifts on me. I received them happily and offered them to Durga. Durga then led Adi Shakti forward and told me to offer the gifts to her. As soon as Adi Shakti touched them, they shone brilliantly and became one. She then blessed me and gave this shining unity to me. 
Inside it, I saw Adi Shakti, Durga, Lakshmi, Saraswati, Bhavrati, and all the worlds, all human beings and the whole universe. I handed over the gift to Durga, but Durga said, It is you who need it, Mira, and that is why you received it. So I took it back and gave it to Sweet Mother, who returned it with her blessing, saying, You keep it. It has been given to you for a purpose. Then the assembly ended. I understand that the individual physical body and the earth consciousness change every moment in an inexpressible way. This is a crucial time for the earth. Many changes will be brought about. It is a supremely auspicious time to receive light. That is why everyone must aspire for it and surrender to the divine. Now nothing is impossible. I knew the path to the Paramatman, but I wanted to follow him in a new way. I was leaving and saw someone who looked like Mahakali. She was very beautiful. When I saw her face, I recognized Mahakali's bliss, her great power and passion. I approached her and expressed my wish. Mahakali exclaimed, I know who has sent you here. I asked for more power, more light, more peace to give to the world. Do you need these for yourself or for the world? I answered, I myself have enough of them since I am getting what I need. I went more for the earth. Mahakali smiled and left without any answer. She had crossed the earthly plane in a sort of enchantment, very swiftly, as if carelessly. I was puzzled and felt uneasy before her strange behavior, not knowing if she wanted to protect or destroy the world. But I said, Mother, I must tell you something. What is it? she asked. I want more of your power. I moved on a bit further when I noticed something that looked like a hard white stone. Although I did not know the name the gods gave it, I clasped the stone in my hands. A white light came from it and went up into the sky. I thought, when there is already plenty of light above, why should I allow this light to go up also? I covered the stone with my hands, blocking the light. Then all the light descended on the earth, which blossomed like a white lotus. I moved on as the blossoms spread far and wide. I thought, I have begun the work and will achieve its results. It is not necessary that I remain here. If the process ceases, then I will come back to start it again. Leaving the supramental world, I crossed three worlds beyond the supramental plane. Beyond these three worlds, Sat, Chit, Ananda, is the Paramatman. I strongly felt that something could be brought down from this region, but saw nothing concrete there. All right, I thought, let it be. I descended from the three planes. Then my body changed. I felt I had no soul, no mind, and had become so light that I was flying. I finally reached the gathering of supramental beings. The supramental beings rose and disappeared. I was left alone, floating as in the wind, thinking, what is being kept hidden here? Upon approaching Mahakali, I felt, why should I interfere with the God's work? The earth is already becoming more supple, more plastic. What do you want, Mira? asked Mahakali. Power, energy, light, and the power to love everything, I answered. I can bestow on you the power to love all, Mahakali replied, but not the other powers. I insisted, give me whatever you have, light, energy, power. If you give me only love, then I will think you have no powers. And Mahakali answered, All right, I will see what is possible. We gazed at each other for a while. Mahakali held out a finger and I clasped it. 
sound was emanating from her finger like Om, which produced a light from which a force or power and bliss emanated. I went on descending. I thought, if I stay any longer, the human world will not receive sufficient light for its change. I have seen the three planes beyond the supermental and did not find what I needed. There is something still invisible beyond these planes which I must get. Yet I wondered why I must love all mankind and have lived it. I felt I had accepted this ideal and resolved to reach for the invisible beyond. Above the supermental plane there are three worlds. Beyond them, on a fourth plane, there is something that ought to be brought down. Everything there is invisible. I see nothing. I don't know how to bring this thing down. The climbing was difficult. On the fourth plane, on my first trip, I had found the place full of light. But now it was deadly dark, and the object that I was searching for had disappeared. I felt dreadful and very frightened. I thought, what am I to do with this darkness, even if I pass through it? I saw a light and decided that I would bring either the light or the darkness with me. By then, the supermental lady had left and I was alone. Then I wandered with hands clasped behind my back, majestically, powerfully, and cheerfully. I knew intuitively that victory was mine and mine alone. I intensified my will with fervent aspiration, concentrating powerfully to bring back this power to earth so as to transform it. While descending, I heard ten times, you will get it. Later I heard the same voice twice again. Mother said, to transform the world, I'm going to bring down the light from Paramatma. And this will make transformation go much faster. Paramatma is beyond the three worlds that lie above the supermental world. It is there that I have seen the special light and will to bring it down to earth. I pray to Paramatma, you are in everything, Lord. You alone must send your light onto earth. You are in everything, so your light should be in everything. Then I heard a voice, you should not ask alone. So I went to sweet mother and Sri Aurobindo and told them. They agreed that they too would pray to Paramatma. And Durga, Lakshmi, Saraswati, Ganapati, Ishwara, Krishna, Rama, Vivekananda also agreed with other gods and goddesses and avatars. We all implored Paramatma with folded hands and then with outstretched hands. But no light appeared. It stayed dark. We went on praying. Then a spark of light appeared and we were assured of his presence. We prayed very reverently. He blessed our prayer and said that the light could descend. Mother said, the light descends, but it is already everywhere, in every cell. All must be open to it. When the Paramatma light descends with delight and peace, it brings a deeper silence and it descends without intermediaries. We have to try and reveal that light which is hidden in us as a bud. It must blossom like a flower. In all things everywhere, in all beings, the light is hidden and it must be revealed. <laughs>